The BC government has pledged to double the number of metal and coal mines in BC over the next two years. And to solidify their promise, the Northwest Transmission Line was built through the Skeena Nass and Stikine watersheds to provide the energy required by metal mines to process extracted ore. Hard rock mining can release large amounts of heavy metals to aquatic ecosystems, sometimes with profound harm to fish. This is because heavy metals naturally leach from rock when exposed to air or water. Human activities can intensify this process by removing vast quantities of rock during metal and coal mining, and the subsequent exposure of that material to weathering processes. Salmon are extremely vulnerable to contaminants such as heavy metals because of sensitive organs that are continuously in contact with water. Dissolved metals, even at low levels, can impair key physiological functions for salmon that are important for survival. For example, high levels of copper will kill fish. We've known this for some time, but what we're beginning to understand are sublethal effects, that is, adverse effects on fish that do not cause immediate or direct death. We're learning that even low levels of dissolved copper, for example, can interfere with the ability of fish to detect and respond to chemical signals in aquatic environments. In other words, copper can impair a fish's ability to smell. Such impairment has many consequences for an animal that relies largely on its sense of smell to survive and thrive. Behaviors such as food gathering, predator avoidance, schooling, defense, navigation between ocean and freshwater, and reproduction are all dependent on a fish's ability to smell. For example, in juvenile coho salmon, recent research out of the University of Washington provides a unique and relevant example of the cost of losing one's sense of smell. Instead of remaining motionless, as they normally would when a nearby predator is detected by its odor, copper-intoxicated juvenile coho continue swimming, and thus become seen and eaten by cutthroat trout. Additionally, juvenile coho salmon exposed to low levels of copper are known to exhibit delayed downstream migration to the ocean and reduced seawater survival compared to unexposed fish. Copper also affects adult spawning salmon. Sublethal copper exposure may also cause adult Chinook salmon to avoid copper-contaminated tributaries when there are other, more habitable, options available. Low levels of copper can also impair a fish's growth and swim speed and suppress their resistance to harmful disease. But copper is not the only metal that can be mobilized by mining and harm salmon. High concentrations of aluminum, cadmium, Lead, nickel, silver, and zinc can kill salmon, and much lower concentrations can cause negative behavioral and physiological effects. However, we know relatively little about how most metals interact with salmon and at what concentrations cause harm. Of the metals that have been described as toxic to salmon, copper is of the most concern. Are salmon in BC protected from metal toxicity? To some degree, BC has guidelines that protect salmon from death by toxicity of metals. And these guidelines appear to protect salmon from many of the lesser sublethal effects of some metals. Copper, however, is not one of them. The most serious issues with the guidelines is just that. They are just guidelines and not legislated. The provincial government often allows mines to exceed the levels that put salmon at risk. One such example is occurring in the Skeena on Babine Lake, home to Canada's largest run of sockeye. Two decommissioned copper mines are permitted to actively discharge copper contaminated water into the lake at concentrations more than 10 times higher than what has been documented as capable of causing olfactory impairment in salmon. Of specific concern is the Belnaranda mine on Babine Lake, whose excavation pit is near full with metal contaminated water. This pit water is scheduled to be treated and pumped into the lake within the next couple of years. 
There are also a large number of mines proposed for the region, including the Booker Gold Copper Mine on the shore of Morrison Lake, a sensitive sockeye nursery lake that drains into Babine Lake. Also proposed is one of the world's largest gold copper mines known as KSM, which would see a tailings lake 8 kilometers long. The proposed KSM mine will release metal-contaminated water into the headwater streams of the Nass and Unic rivers. What's the worry? BC hosts the largest abundance of wild salmon in the country, yet is also the nation's largest producer of copper, and copper production is about to expand. Given the speed of the proposed development of mines in BC and the abundance and importance of wild salmon in the province, there is an urgent need to assess whether such developments pose a risk to salmon now and into the future. More research is needed to determine the concentration thresholds for all metals released from mines in BC, so we can protect salmon from harm. This research should inform government guidelines for metals released into salmon-bearing waters, and these guidelines need to be legislated. What can we do? Become more informed. Learn about mining impacts in your area and get active in protecting fish and water. Write a letter to your MP and MLA explaining why salmon matter to you. Stay informed. Join the Skeena Wild mailing list at skeenawild.org.